Good evening to everybody. Welcome to the class of the family law that I am dealing with the wills and I covered to certain extent the wills that is called Vasiyat. Yes, read. Okay, just a minute. Read what I put on the screen. Yes. Read what I put on the screen. Good evening. What is Vasiyat? Will is the anglo Mohammedan term for its Arabic equivalent wasiyat. Second point, concept of will under Muslim law. A will or testament or wasiyat has been defined as an instrument by which a person makes disposition of his property to take effect after his death. Third point, the distinguishing features of a will is that it becomes effective after the death of the testator and it is revocable. Fourth point, unlike any other disposition within the parenthesis, Exemplicratia sale, Exemplicratia. Or, Exemplicratia, sale or gift. The testator exercise uh, full control over the property Quitted till he is alive. The legity or beneficiary under the will cannot interfere in any manner whatsoever in the legator's power of enjoyment of the property, including its disposal or transfer. Professor Dr. M. S. Hussein. Yes. This is what is the wasiyat we start, uh, we read the yesterday class also, now that you have given. And uh, wasiyat is the anglo Mohammedan terminology which is equivalent to the Arabic wasiyat. Uh, and uh, concept of will under the Muslim law is it is a testament or a will or a wasiyat. It is different and an instrument, it is a document by which a person makes a disposition means alienation or transferring of his property uh, that will take, after, take effect only after the death of the testator. So that is the thing which I want to say. But now let us, without wasting the time, and we will uh, cover up to this extent where I put my asterisk mark. Uh, then let us see. Next, creating of a life state is not permissible under the Sunila. The bequest of a life estate in favor of a person would operate as if it is an absolute grant. When you want to give the, give the bequest the, for the life, the entire property should be given to it. Then only the bequest will be valid. Bequest. Under the Shia law, however, the bequest of a life estate in favor of one and a vested remainder to another after his death is valid. Okay, if one till the death, later on it will pass to the another person, yes, it is a valid. Testamentary power and its limits, that is a bequeathable one third. What is the power will be given to the testator to alienate the property among the strangers or among the new persons, not the legal heirs, that is only profit allowed, one third can be allowed to give to anybody, even a stranger. So, that is the last word that say Prophet Muhammad. A Muslim does not possess the unlimited power of making a disposition by will. So, in the will, he could not make a power, he could not have that much power for giving the entire property to the stranger. But in the gift, a Muslim can give the entire property to the stranger, but it is only theoretical, practical, it is a nil. So, there are twofold restrictions in the power of a Muslim to dispose his property by will in the testament, which are in respect of a person in whose favor the bequest is made, and as to the extent to which he can dispose of his property. So, only one third can give to that person to whom he likes, who testator. Is it clear? Say yes. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, 
you read hima bindu this is obvious because the object behind this restriction is to protect the interests of the testator's heirs what is the restriction put over there in the will and by third what about the gift given... what about in the gift say if you know it you tell me if you don't know it say pass on is to protect the gift the goes to the donee sir as per the donors intention see i i ask you a direct question what is the power of the donor to give the donee any restricted power or unrestricted power unrestricted power sir unlimited power unrestricted power in the gift but in the case of the will the power is limited one third only he can give to anybody to whom he likes that's only the difference okay no muslim can make a bequest of more than one third of his net assets after payment of the peripheral charges and debts plus legacies if the bequested property exceeds one third the consent of the heirs is essential sunni and shia law in case by the will if he gives who testator more than one third at that instance the consent of the heirs are must either you say sunni law or shia law of course the little difference we will see it when what is that a bequest of entire property to one heir to the exclusion of the other heirs is why why tell me this if you know it you tell me if you don't know it you say pass on say pass on how do you speak pass on sir see a bequest of entire property to one heir he is having the two three heirs one cannot give the entire property to the one heir to the exclusion means to removing excluding of other heirs is why so when they are having the two three heirs he could not give the entire property to the one heir because in the bequest also you have to you as per the quranic shares or as per the sir would they are going to expect to get it because one cannot give the more in the form of a will or any other thing because the actually will one third will be given but generally it will not be given to the heirs it will be given to the other people that is the equation they made for the will okay where the heirs refuse to give their consent for the one third the bequest should be valid only to the extent of one third see one third his father can give it but more than one third not valid of the property and the rest of the two third would go by interstate succession so whatever the amount would be left over there two third it goes among the succession of course that to be what removing the funeral expenses deducting the debts allotting the shares according to the legacies will whatever the amount would be left over there that will devolve upon the quranic heirs residues and kindred garden if property is left in respect of the bequest of one third to an heir the consent of the other heirs is required in sunni law i repeat in the respect of bequest of one third to an heir suppose the one third he wants to give to an heir not to the stranger please note the point the consent of the other heirs is required to in sunni law why he wants to give one third in the form of a will to the heir tell me what is the reason because anyway heirs are going to get it why specially one third that is in the form of a will to the one heir because that pharaoh did not study number 1 and he is not that much earning member number 2 if the other heirs will agree to that one okay let him give in the form of will 
one third to the one hair, the consent of the other hair is given, is required, must in the Sunni law. But if anybody would challenge it, he is not supposed to give. So whatever that he is going to get in the form of the Quranic share, he will get it definitely. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Sir. Yes. Speak. So in in Shia law, a little different, but not in the Shia law. What they say, if one third would be given to one hair, let them give it. It is the father. So there is no such a consent will be required in the Shia law. In case of a non-hairs, non-hairs means strangers, the consent of hair is not required in both the cases. Suppose if he is giving for the non-hairs, a stranger, the concept here is not required in the both. In the both of them, either Sunni law or Shia law, concept of the hairs is not required if one third is given to the stranger. So when it is required, when it is required, concept of the legal hairs are required, when it is required, tell me. If you know it, you tell me. If you don't know it, say pass on. When bequest is... Uh, a is going to only one hair excluding other hairs and consists to be taken. My question is taken. very much clear. My question is very much clear. I need mean, My question is, can the consent of the hairs are needed if the bequest is given to whom? Yes. The bequest what? is given to the one of the legal hair. That is the answer. Repeat. One of the legal hairs. The bequest is given to the one of the legal hair. At that instance, consent of the other hair says are needed in the Sunni law. But in Shia law, not needed, not required. In But if the bequest is given to the non-hairs, that is a stranger, one third, Neither in the Sunni law nor in the Shia law, the consent of the heirs are required. Means not required, that means neither in the Sunni law nor in the Shia law, the consent is not required. When the bequest is given one third to the non heirs, that is the difference. Okay, let us see. The ever rule of the bequestable one third will not apply to the case where the testator has no heirs. Suppose the testator doesn't have the hairs. Now what? Now you tell me. What will happen? There is no question of uh, taking the consent will arise. Number one. Number two. Suppose the testator died. Then no hairs are there. Then the property go. If, the, if it is the residues are there, it will go to the residues. If the residues are not there, it will go to the kinders. If none of them, none of the three would not be available, then it goes to the, then it goes to the government. Government, sir. The government in the form of a seed. To the government in the form of a seed. Spelling? Yes, C H E A T. Good. The right of the government to take the estate on hairless person will not in any way restrict the right of a person to make a disposition of his property as he likes. Suppose, suppose if he wants to give the property in the form of a will to a stranger, can the government will come and say, you are not supposed to give to the stranger because you don't have the legal hairs, then the property should have to be given to us. Answer is no. The right of the government to take the state of the hairless, hairless means no hairs, person will not in any way restrict the right of a person to make a disposition of his property as he likes. If he wants, he can give to any Dharinabaya Dhanaya, a pedestrian, a walker, a unknown person, a stranger, he can give. Thus, the government is no hair. Thus, the government is no hair to an hairless person. Thus, the 
Suppose if none of them is there, no will is there, no nothing is there, then in the form of exist, the property goes to the government. Is it clear? Yes, sir. A bequest made for the past purposes is valid to the extent of one third of the property, both under Sunni and Shiala. Suppose if you are giving the bequest to a mosque or a church or the temple or shawl tree or langar, where the people are served food, at that instance, yes, it can be given in the both the Shia and Sunni law. But the, the point clearly says the langar to whom? Is it exclusively for the Muslims or anybody? Of course, for the langar, I mean, for the food, there is no such a restriction would be there. You are a Muslim, come and eat. You are a Hindu, no, you are not supposed to eat. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because hungry is common to each and everybody. I don't know whether you have gone to the Tirupati or not. Have you gone to the Tirupati? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Langar, there will run the langar. Irrespective of the cash and creed, people come and eat. That to be a very hot, hot lunch with a good curries. Even myself also ate. Of course, only one day I have gone, so I ate only once. <laughs> okay, now let us see the one third limit rule will not apply if a Muslim marries under the Special Marriage Act 1954. Why? Give me the answer. If you don't know, say pass on. I will give you the answer. With the Special Marriage Act, uh, the castes are different, sir. Special Marriage uh, Act will be applicable irrespective of the creed, caste and everyone. So it is not applicable. Muslim law is not applicable over there because Special Marriage Act is a common to all. Because then he has all the powers of a testator under the Indian Succession Act. At that instance, only the Indian Succession Act 1925 rule will be applicable. So, that is the point. Consent of the heirs. Consent by the heirs under the Sunni law shall be given only after the death of the testator. While in Shia, it may be before or after the death of the testator also. To whom? To the stranger or to the legal heirs. Or one of the hair. Generally, with one of the hairs, they are going to give it the consent is necessary. But for the stranger, for the stranger, he cannot give more than one third. Then, then, if he cannot give over there, suppose if he wants to give the more than one third, then the consent should be necessary for the hairs. Are you following me? Total hairs. But who will give the consent? Unless until there is a vested interest in. He is also one of the one of the brother, but mother is different. Are you following me? Concerning and brother is there, our sister is there. Then say, okay, doesn't matter. My father is there. My father product, let him give. Okay, here constant by the hairs under the Shia Sunni law, he shall be given only after the death of the testator. Well, then Shia, it may be before or after the death of the testator, a constant could be taken. A consent must be a definitive, whether the express or implied by the positive conduct and a mere silence on the part of hair will not amount to a implied consent, where a silent is not half acceptance. So, you should have to give through the mouth, his mouth, consent. Okay, of course, in the form of writing also. The attestation of the will by the hairs and acquisitions in the legati taking position of the property has been held to be the sufficient consent. Suppose if they agree it and sign it, it is a tantamount to the consent will be given over there. In cases where only some of the heirs give their consent, the shares of those continuing the consenting will be bound and the legacy in excess is payable out of the consenting heirs share only. Suppose among the four sharers, heirs, only two have given the consent to give more than one third. At that instance, the more than one third will be taken only from the other two who have given the consent. Those who did not give the consent, that uh, the extra amount which is not be deducted because they are not given the consent, that's why 
he should give the proportionate amount to the donee. Here, not donor, donee. The means legacy, legatee here. Consent once given cannot be later rescinded. Suppose once you have given the consent, okay, dad, you can give more than one third to either one of our one of our heirs or to the stranger, and we are going to give the signature, put the signature over there. Then it's okay. If the four are out of four, only two have given, from the two only, that amount will be deducted. Those who did not give the consent, from there, it will not be deducted. Similarly, consent cannot be given after an heir was previously repudiated it. See, the point is, if a person is repudiated, then there is no question of giving the consent and no consent. Bequest to the heirs and non-heirs. Where the testator makes a bequest to the heirs, as well as the non-heirs, by the same legacy, in only one instrument, in the absence of the consent of the heirs, suppose if there is no consent of the heirs are there, the legacy will not be invalid in its entirety, but will take effect with respect to the non-heirs. For the non-heirs, yes, it can be taken effective. For the heirs, it will not be taken into effective because, because their share is going over there and hence, hence they could not agree for that one. The rule is that as far as possible, the will, a will be given the maximum effect that is capable of. Say so once the will is made, the maximum effect it should be given over there. Now let us see that how a will can be revoked, revocation of a will. Yes, anyone can read this revocation of the will. Yes. Same law confers on a on a testator unfettered right to revoke his will. A Muslim testator may revoke during his lifetime any will made by him expressly or impliedly. Thus, if he sells, makes gifts gift to of the subject of bequest or a deal, deal deals with the same in any one other manner uh, like constructing a house on the piece of land requested either would imply revocation yes now muslim confers on a testator who is a testator who is going to give in the form of a will unfettered right to revoke his will I means there is no limit he can revoke it at any time in the lifetime of him. Whose lifetime of? Testator. Testator lifetime of it, he can revoke it. A Muslim testator may revoke during his lifetime, yes. Any, any will made by the him expressly or impliedly. Either he made expressly or impliedly, he can revoke it both the way. Thus, if he sells makes a gift of the subject of a bequest or deals with the same in the, any other manner like uh, constructing a house on the piece of land bequeathed earlier would imply revocation. Suppose he bequeathed the one land to a, somebody, but after some time he constructed a house on the land. That means indirectly he is not going to give the land to the to the To the begun. Yes. Is it? He is not going to give the land to the beggar. Ligati. Ligati means who is going to receive the property in the form of a will. Testator. Testatrix with a female. Legator, male. Female? Female? Legati. <laughs> no. A person who receives called Legati. But generally we will say if it is a male or female, doesn't matter. It is a Legati only. The state of tricks only will say at the time when she's a female. When you say student, does it not applicable to the boy student or girl student? Applicable to both of them. <clears throat> For example, where the testator gives land to his friend under a will, but a year later gives the same to his daughter. 
the bequest in favor of the friend is automatically revoked. That means, which is earlier would be revoked by the later act. If the earlier it is given to a friend, but later on the same property is given to the daughter, then which is revoked? First one or second one? First one is First one is revoked, which is given to the friend. So where a testator makes a will, and by a subsequent will, next will, second will, give the same property to someone else, the prior bequest is revoked. That means, which is the latest bill, I mean will, it will dominate. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Suppose, if a Muslim man is having first wife, 55 years, second wife, 40 years, third wife, 25 years, and fourth wife, 20 years, who dominates more? Fifty years. The Fifty years will right. dominate more means twenty years will dominate more. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, sir. In the wills also, first will, second will, third will, fourth will, the latest fifth will will dominate it. So that was the thing which will be come across over there. So in this way we can make it latest one prevail over the the old one means old will will be revoked and the latest next prepared will will be in continuation but a subsequent bequest though of the same property to another person in the same will does not operate as a revocation of the prior bequest so one thing is very much clear here but a subsequent bequest through the same property to another person in the same will does not operate as a revocation of the prior bequest. If it is a different, different will would be there, latest will be revoked. If in the same will, if he wants to give to some property to the other person also, then he can do so. But only some property will go to the first one and some property will go to the next one because he did not eliminate the total. And the property will be divided between the two legatees in equal shares. Suppose in the beginning there is one legatee, but later on he made two legatees. That means the property will be shared among the between the two equal shares. So a legatee may be one or two or more than two also. Is it or not? Yes, sir. What about the testator? Only one. One. Only one. Suppose if somebody is there, okay, let him add his own will. Do they make combined? Answer no. It is not necessary that for revoking an earlier will, another will must be made. Suppose, do you think that the first will be revoked means second will you have to make it out? Not necessarily. The first will, you wrote that the property is, the land is given to the friend. The same land, you constructed a house there. That means the first will is revoked. Not necessary, one should have to write the second will. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, death of a legati before the operation of a will. So, what will happen if the legati who is going to get the property is died first? Not first, died first, died. Then, Read this one. Yes. Read. Under swimming law, where before the will can operate, the legatee dies, the bequest will lapse, and the property bequeathed would remain with the testator, and on his death will go to his heirs in absence of any other disposition by him. Yes. Suppose if the testator has given the property, bequeathed the property to the test legati, but the legati died without having any heirs. That means the property will be written back to the testator. Suppose the testator dies, later on it goes to the estate. In case 
If the testator wants, he can also make another will, see that the property will go to the somebody else instead of coming to him. Because he already gave the property to somebody else and he doesn't want to again retain the property. So under Shia law, the legacy will lapse only if the legatee dies without leaving an heir or if the testator, after the death of the legatee, revokes the will. So in the Shia law, suppose the legatee dies over there, if there are legal heirs to the legatee, they will succeed it under Shia law. But after the death of the legatee, revokes the will. But only the thing is here, after the death of a legati. So the legacy will last only if the legati dies without leaving their hair. If the lega, if the testator, after the death of a legati, he revokes the will. If that doesn't have the uh, hairs, automatically it revokes the will. However, however, if the testator, even after the death of the legati, does not revoke the will or the date of operation of the will, the benefit under it will pass to the heirs of the legati. In case that he did not take the property over there after the death of the legati also, legati, then the legal heirs of the legati are enjoying it, then it let it be enjoyed. So it will be said because in the Sunni law, it will be come back to him. In the Shia law, if he doesn't have the Heirs, then only it will be written back to the like, testator. So, rateable abatement, let us see. What is the rateable abatement? When you bequest more than one third of the property is made to or more persons, and the heirs don't give their consent, the shares are reduced proportionately. Suppose more than one third is given for the people, but the, for the heirs, they are not given the consent to give more than one third at the time. Proportionally, rateably, it will be reduced till it reaches to the till it reaches to the till it reaches to the third. One third. Why you are taking that much time? Because in any case, when you place it, you should not cross one third. Or in the other words, the bequest a bit rateably. The above rule applies in the Sunni law only. That is the difference. Of course, there is a light, light difference that you will find in the Sunni law of the bequest and the Shia law of the bequest. So, now let us see the definition of a will. Bailey definition is different. A will confirmate of the rights property in a specific thing or a profit of an advantage in gravity of the take effect on the death of the testator. In the first class, we read uh, how they defined it. And uh, Fatwa al Magri, and uh, they defined will is a legal declaration of the intention of the testator with respect to his property, which he desires to be carried out into effect his, after his death. So, that is the declaration made by the testator after the death of him, how the property will be devolved. That will be written over there in the form of a well, so if you see the gift hiba, the gift hiba is definition is different. Here, hedaya hiba is the transfer of tangible property without consideration. In the Faizi, it is the immediate and unqualified transfer of the corpus of the property without any return. So, a little distinction that we will find between the gift and will. So, now as to the completion, a will is actuated after the death of the testator, before it cannot be opened. But a gift is completed during the lifetime of the donor. If the lifetime of the donor, if the gift is given over there, yes, it is given fully. Number two, as to conditions are concerned. Will is a dependent upon a condition, that is the death of the testator, okay, because insurance company. And a gift is operated immediately. So, there is a tenure would be there and here there is no tenure, it will be operated immediately. Then the third is as to revocation, means not giving or giving away. Means not giving away the property to somebody else called revocation. Will cannot be revoked at any time before the death of the testator. So, only the will can be revoked in the life of the testator, but after the death of the testator, will cannot be revoked over there. Number gift, 
gift after the dis after delivery the position is usually irrevocable if once the gift property is given the position is given to the donee then it is a highly impossible to retrieve back the same property back so number 4 as to the limitations it will be the right of making a will is limited to 2 years so will it is limited to the 2 years in a gift, the right of donor to gift is unrestricted. As not one year, two year, it is unrestricted till he or she dies, and whose name the property is there. Okay, next the fifth point as to the existence of the subject matter. Yes, it is not necessary that the subject matter of the will must be existed at the time of making a will. Suppose if he is making a will at the time the matter is not in existence, but still it is a valid will, like usufruct enjoying. Right, in the form of a gift given to the somebody else that is also come under the one of the one of the gift at the time. So the subject of gift must be in existence the time of making a gift. So in the gift, the subject matter should be existence, and the, on the subject, he is the owner of the property. Is it clear? Yes, yes sir. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, read the this point. Read. It's to delivery of position. Delivery of position is not required in the will. In a gift, there must be delivery of position of the property to the donee. So delivery is must where? Delivery is must where? Gift, sir, in gift. Say loudly if if say loudly if gift. the position is must okay don't so now the seventh point is as to doctrine of musha yeah undivided undivided property is called the musha like uh, staircases the doctrine of musha has no application in case of a will in the will it will not work over there the doctrine of musha is applicable in case of gift suppose if you are given the property a gift to his adjacent house, but the only one staircase would be there, hence it can be used both. The stator as well as the will legati. So number eight as to acceptance, it will acceptance but the legati is not necessary, especially in the matter of the will is concerned. But a gift is acceptance is very much essential factor over there. Of course, if the, he doesn't want to take it out, let him take it out. He repudiates it and return back to the property, to, to the testator or uh, to the state also. Number ninth, uh, as to registration, registration of the will is optional. Either you do it, but preferably do it because to avoid the further litigations. And a gift must be registered under the Registration Act. Yes, uh, the gift deed always should be registered with a sufficient number of these stamps attached to it. Uh, because nowadays we do have the Franklin mission. So with that, it will be paid the amount uh, in advance. Yeah, as to the insanity is concerned, the subsequent insanity of the testator makes the will white because insanity is there. Either he is a, a Shia or Sunni, it doesn't make any difference. And a gift after the delivery of the position is irrevocable on the ground of insanity. Suppose the gift given over there, before the delivery period, if you are given, then it may be valid. But once the delivery period is over and if you are given, it is said to be invalid. So that is the another point. So as to the consideration is concerned, a will is always a without consideration. But in some cases, there is a consideration in a gift. The gift is the transfer of the property which is made immediately and without any exchange by one person to another will is dependent upon the condition lies, condition lies the death of the gestation. The gift and will are two different things under Islamic law. So now let us see the difference between the was yet in front of a law. So, a Muslim will must construe primarily in accordance with the rules and laid down in the Muhammadan law, bearing in mind the social conditions that prevail, the language employed and the surrounding circumstances also taken into consideration. Now, let us see some of the point of the summarizing differences between the uh, Sunni law and Shia law. Number one, read. Number one, read. Number one, in Sunni law, the bequest to an heir is invalid. 
even to the extent of one third of the total property of a testator, whereas in Shiala the bequest to his is valid up to the extent of one third of the property. Yes, these are the things we will come across in the difference between the two, and I believe that you got the point. In the Shia law, the bequest is to the highest valid up to the extent of one third of the property only. But here, the consent will be given over there. It can be more than one third also. The consent of the heirs must be given after the death of the testator in Sunni law. But in the Shia law, the consent of the heirs may be given or before or after the death of the testator, as we read earlier. The bequest is the favor of a child in the home of his mother is valid provided if she is born within six months, making a will in Sunni law. But uh, it is up to 10 months under the Shia law. Six months under the Shia law. Sunni law. And 10 months under the Shia law. And the fourth one, a will by the testator who later commits the suicide is valid in Sunni law. This is invalid in Shia law. Suppose a man committed a suicide, it is valid in the Sunni law. But if a man is committed a suicide, it is invalid in the Shia law. Unless he will made, unless he will made before or taking any step towards the commission of the act of suicide for all will to become a valid. So, and the next fifth difference is the legacy has to be accepted after the death of the testator in Sunni law, but here legacy under the Shia law can be accepted before and after the testator's death. Even before or after the testator, there also legacy can be accepted or not accepted. Number six, the legatee who, legati who causes the death of the testator cannot take his property under the Sunni law because for getting the property, he killed the testator. That idea will come out. Hence, if you are going to get the going to get the property in the form of a heir, but why don't you want to suffocate him to make him the testator to die early? So he will disinherit the property if such a thing is done to the legal testator. Sunni so, law that is there. Under Shia law, if the death of the testator was caused by the legati accidentally, then the property can be taken. But uh, otherwise, suppose intention is there, intention not is there, then the property will be decided regarding the intentional act or intentional act and proportionally it will be given. Next, uh, seventh is under Sunni law, if the legati dies before the testator, the legacy lapses automatically. Under Shia law, if the legati dies before the testator, the, it, it goes to the legal heirs. Is it clear? When the legati dies without you living in an area higher, where the testator himself revokes the will, at that time he will take back. But the legati dies, but he is having the hairs. At that instance, the hairs will claim the amount. So, number eight, where the bequest is more than one person in excess of the valid of one third, at the time the proportionate uh, rateable interest would be made and the, promotion, the proportional amount would be given to him. But in any case, the property is. Uh, um, what I say, made the addition, you should not cross more than one. In Shiala, it is the rule of the chronological priority that is applied in determining the distribution of the one-third property. I say strip, I say uh, doctrine of representation. So doctrine of representation will come in the, no, representation uh, will not, uh, representation will be there in the Sunni law, doctrine of strip is there in the Shiala. Okay. Therefore, a will in a Muslim law is a divine disposition of the property because it is a divine disposition because nowhere it is written over there. No. It is only help to those, those who doesn't come under the Quranic hairs or Christian kingdom. The object of the will is twofold. Firstly, it prevents a person from interfering or defeating the claim, claims of the lawful hairs. So the restriction of the one-third ensures that the at least two-thirds of the property must be enjoyed by the legal hairs. Secondly, by permitting the testator to bequeath one third of the property, or she is empowered to settle just claims of the even stranger, other relatives, and who are not their heirs. So, not to disinherit the legal heirs, the one third should only be given to the stranger. So, now let us see the a will might create a dispute among the family members who are not mentioned in the will. In such a case, gift deed can be used. Similarly, a gift can be acquired immediately, so it cannot be changed in the case. A will is a better option and it is not acquired immediately and can be changed. Hence, both these documents have their own pros and cons are equally important for transferring the assets. So, it is up to the executor to choose between these two.
A executor means a person who want to execute the the proportionate amount of the the that proportionate amount which is given in the Quranic hair should be given should be given proportionately to the legal hairs. So these are the things which I want to make it out in the today's class, and we did it successfully well, and type of will, and they can say requisite of the will. Is it or not? We did that also. Requisition. Yes, sir. And uh, we also did it. Uh, the distinction between the gift and will. That is the distinction we have seen. And we also seen the distinction between the Shia law and Sunni law regarding the regarding the wills. So, this I have gone to the incidents. No, this is not the incidents. That is the Muslim law. So, if you happen to see the syllabus of the Muslim law, which I already put it over there, but I don't know where it is disappeared. When I was making, moving the things. Yes, I, I made it open. The red highlighted one. You please see wills, meaning of will. Yes, hidayah, and we have seen the other. Renowned persons will also how it's a requisites of the valid will. What is the essential condition for the valid will? And revocation of will when your will can be revoked. And distinction between the will and gift. We just now we did it, and with the last we did the difference between the Shia and Sunni law with the wills. So tomorrow class is tomorrow class is Bafta. Bafta. Why you are taking so much time? <laughs> Sir, we would like to see, sir, whether you are saying this one or we are going backward. No, we are going in the in the red direction only. So when you come to the class, you should read and come to the class. Let us make the class as a participatory class rather than the preaching class or a sermon class that I usually say to my students. With this, I would like to wind it up my today class. Before it could wind it up, I will wind it up today. Yeah, the meeting has end for the participants. Still five minutes are there, you, but uh, I want to end it by today. Yes, do you want to say anything? Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome.